Okay, my name is Todd Connor, and I'm the founder of Bunker Labs, and I also started a company called The Collective Academy that runs leadership development uh, programs for companies. And so I want to talk about amazing icebreakers. I get asked about this a lot. It's funny. Um, just how to do icebreakers, because I do a lot of icebreakers. Icebreakers are good and necessary anytime you bring a group of people together where there is a little bit of resident or hesitance. It can be colleagues that work together, but maybe there's like a sense of like them, you know, having like a guard up for some reason, or if it's strangers, right? So anytime you're bringing together a group of people, um, and if you're doing that, you want to do icebreakers. People roll their eyes. They think icebreakers are cheesy. I get it, but they work. And there's a reason why we do them. So here's my three tips on uh, how to do great icebreakers. Number one, here's a, here's a good one. Ask people to stand up. Physicality is important in icebreakers. Ask people to stand up and pretend like they are just seeing a best friend that they haven't seen in 10 years. I'm telling you, I've done this a hundred times. It always works. It's great with strangers. I've done this at like sales conferences where people are sitting and they expect to sort of passively listen to a keynote speaker. When you ask them to stand up, turn to the person next to you, pretend like it's your best friend that you haven't seen in 10 years and you're just running into them at the airport. And people are amazing. They're like, oh my gosh, it's good to see you. They hug each other. They, you know, maybe that's not safe anymore. Um, but it always works. Um, you ask people to role play an emotion of like connection. And it, what's interesting about the brain is that they then believe that, right? They then, after that icebreaker, they actually feel emotionally connected to the people around them and to the audience. So number one, pretend like you haven't known each other in 10 years and turn to the person next to you and have a reunion. Number two, have people check in with each other. Engaging an audience is not about, and this is what everyone gets wrong, it's not about how dynamic you are as a speaker. It's actually about what the audience is feeling and doing throughout the time that you are talking. So asking the audience to turn to the person next to them and show a picture from their phone of something that has meaning for them is a good example. It's forcing people to, and it's uncomfortable for them, maybe, to like show a personal side of themselves. Like I'm not just an anonymous person at this conference. Like here's a picture of my family. Here's a picture of what I was doing this weekend. Here's a picture of me being silly or being casual. Um, that's a great way to, to sort of open up the audience. And the third prompt I would give you is a little bit provocative, which is give them a starter of a sentence. Like if I'm honest with myself, dot, 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 and ask people to turn in to their neighbor or to like maybe a group of three or four around them and have them all answer that question. So if I'm honest with myself, I don't know anything about this topic or I don't really want to be here right now or um, I've got a lot I'm worrying about um, uh, or I feel like I have imposter syndrome. Those kinds of openers it, and people talking to each other is really great for like enlivening an audience and having it feel dynamic that people are talking to each other. So. Audience talking to themselves is a really great way of, of engaging them, and you do that through icebreakers. So if you want to learn more, we have a cheat sheet that we created for Bunker Labs that includes 20 icebreakers. You can download that. You can use that. If you're confused about it, just email me, and I can help explain what they do. Thanks, all.